out there it's another exciting time with the psychologist angie tv i hope you've been good well i've been doing very well and today i'm going to be talking to you about three interesting and crazy facts about teenagers and adolescents that neuroscience has helped us to know about yes you heard me right three exciting and rather crazy facts about teenagers so if you're a teenager you must listen to this one i mean i'm going to be vindicating you i'm going to be re revealing some interesting facts about you if you're a parent ah you don't want to miss this and if you're a teacher or you work with teenagers and adolescents one way or the other this video is for you so the first interesting and crazy fact um about teenagers i'm going to reveal to you today we preceded by a story now this is me after a long day at work i'm tired been all around and about and now i'm sleepy and i get home and i try i'm i try to get ready for bed and at about 7 30 8 o'clock i'm ready to go to bed and i say to my teenagers i have like a bunch of very beautiful and interesting teenagers yeah you see them on the screen there and um i said to them it's bedtime go to bed so you can go to school early tomorrow and then they struggle for a bit i fall asleep and i tell them to ensure they're in bed before it's 9 p.m and then i wake up from sleep somewhere around 10 o'clock and come and they're still uh, doing some stuff in the parlor maybe doing their homework sometimes watching tv and i chase them back to bed and i go to bed and i sleep for about an hour and i remember that those uh, this uh, crazy teenagers might be up again up till 11 and so i wake up and go check and there they are still in the sitting room doing their thing you know and so it leads to me going in and out of bed trying to make them go to bed in time the moment i get out of the sitting room and back to my bed and fall asleep they run back to the sitting room and continue doing their business and then I wake up and I chase them and we keep going back and forth like this. This continued happening until I uh, did some studies in neuroscience and got to find out that our circadian rhythm, that our sleep cycle does not stay the same throughout our lifestyle. Okay, so whilst we are children, our circadian rhythm is quite stable and we go to bed early, early, maybe about 7, 8 and then wake up at regular time, 6, 7 a.m., but as we approach our adolescents, our, our circadian rhythms tend to shift the rate a little because of a hormonal increase in our system, the hormones that are released in our system. So this influences the circadian rhythm of teenagers and makes them want to go to bed somewhere towards midnight and then makes them want to stay in bed later and wake up later in the morning. We've all heard about the lazy teen. So this is the reason why teenagers will go to bed later and wake up later. And as a matter of fact, some schools in the West have considered changing the start time from school just to accommodate this uh, difference, uh, these physiological shifts, you know, in teenagers. So if you're like me, you've been struggling with early bedtime for teenagers and you've been thinking, oh, these teenagers are driving me crazy. Hold on a minute, it is not the teenagers that are driving you crazy, it's actually their physiology. So teenagers, yeah, you're welcome. You've been, you know, accused of a lot and now I'm vindicating you from this one. Yeah, so that's the reason why teenagers will go to bed late and wake up late. The second and rhythm shifts because of hormonal increase in their system and so it's just physiology. Now, the second fun crazy fact about teenagers that I'm going to be uh, revealing to you today. Uh, yes, I'm going to ask you a question. If you're a teenage mom, a uh, teenage teacher, have you ever thought and think, uh, thought, uh, oh, these teenagers never want to take another person's perspective? These teenagers never want to listen to the advice of older people. As we say in Africa, what an adult or an elder person can see sitting down, a teenager cannot see even if he climbs on the tree. And so you expect the teenagers to take your perspective, but they never do. And if you've ever thought that way, yes, you're right. Teenagers do not take other people's perspective. And this is why. Neuroscience has revealed that the part of the brain that's responsible for teenagers taking other people's perspective, which is located somewhere around the midfrontal cortex, is still developing. Okay? 
Now, formerly we thought that by adolescence, the brain had completely developed. So we thought that, you know, it was, a, 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 the development was concrete and static. And, you know, at uh, adolescence, the brain development had been complete. But recent research in neuroscience in the last two decades about that has made us to know that brain development continues throughout our lifetime. Okay, and at mid-adolescence and early adulthood, the prefrontal cortex particularly is under development. There's a lot of pruning going on there. The gray matter size is being pruned. There's, there's a, you know, some, I, I wouldn't want to say deficits. The gray matter is still growing. The prefrontal cortex is still growing. And if you know as much as I do, the prefrontal cortex is the part of our brain that's responsible for decision making, for planning, for thinking, for rationalizing and this part of the brain in adolescence is still developing okay we're going to talk about how that affects them a little um uh, down the line but know that the part of their brain that's responsible for them taking the perspective of other people is still growing so they do not take other people's perspective they will be able to follow instructions better than they'll be able to take other people's perspective you see so when you're talking to your teenager about something even from experience and he's refusing to take your perspective don't go crazy it is not your crazy thing or it's not your thing driving you crazy it's just their physiology now the third fun and crazy facts about teenagers i'm going to be revealing to you today is the fact that of course this one is not new to us teenagers are poor decision making even though they would never agree yeah yeah but also there are master risk takers they enjoy risk taking behavior okay and why do they enjoy risk taking behavior like driving while drunk and some of them even getting killed in the process you know like engaging in casual sex some of them being infected with hiv and all of this in the process and all this crazy risk taking behavior why do they engage in risk taking behavior this is why now the part of their limbic system or of our limbic system that helps us to um enjoy pleasure you know to uh, sense pleasure in adolescence is hypersensitive the part of the limbic system that is uh, sensitive to pleasure and pleasure seeking behaviors is hypersensitive in teenagers and is particularly hypersensitive to risk taking behaviors so that they, they get a lot of pleasure from risk taking behaviors it gives them the high you know the areas around the amygdala the limbic system and so they will engage in risk taking behavior because it's a pleasurable behavior to them and this is also not their fault it is their physiology well i don't know if to say thanks to physiology or what but that is the situation now if you are a teenager and adolescent are you listening to this how can this help you say information is power so the next time you're going to be engaging in a risk taking behavior think twice there's something driving you you know and then you with the knowledge that you've gotten armed with knowledge as knowledge is power you should be able to moderate or reduce your risk taking behavior imagine driving drunk and getting killed you don't want that for yourself do you or engaging in casual sex or you know uh, uh playing around with drugs as a matter of fact that's a risky one because also because of the fact that your brain is still developing you're most susceptible to addiction so when you start experimenting with drugs you know to maybe uh, be feel among your friends or you know to gain recognition whatever it is uh, to establish your individuality next time you're experimenting with drugs know that you're playing with addiction and maybe you look out for our next video on addiction so you know what you're getting yourself into addiction can be crazily uh uh detrimental uh, to your health you know and to your life uh in its entirety so that's my video for today three interesting and crazy facts about teenagers that neuroscience has helped us understand if you're new to this uh, uh channel just click on the subscribe button and be subscribed to this channel so that you can follow up on all of our interesting and educative videos and if you're a teenager yeah this is a way to thank me subscribe to this channel you know i just vindicated you from some accusations you know some false accusations your parents your teachers always thought you were driving them crazy but i just let them know it wasn't you it's physiology so click on that subscribe button subscribe to this channel if you're a parent you know next time your teenager is driving you crazy you can just look at them and smile and say oh, i know what the problem is and you would not let yourself be even crazy anymore uh thank you for sticking with me through this video looking forward to see you in the future videos have yourself an 
amazing day out there. It's fantastic day out there. Until I come your way again next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>